Welcome to the Cabinet of Curiosity. This wonderful cabinet is part of a whole project of work with people from primary schools and older people. And they worked together to look at some of the things that were in Lowestoft Museum, some of these things which we'll see in the drawers. Let's have a look at this beautiful book, because as part of the project, we made the book and said something about the project that we've done, including some original stories inspired by the museum, but also some fabulous works of art about the things that were held in the museum, all those magical stories behind the artefacts in the museum. In this cabinet, there are six drawers, and inside each drawer is a clue to something that is a treasure held in the Lowestoft Museum. We haven't got the real treasures in the drawer because they would be too precious, but each of the drawers has a story inside it that leads to something inside the museum, and stories are precious too. So you will see that all of the drawers are lined with real gold because the stories are very precious. Let's open the first one. It says here, Harry Peck. Inside, we can see that there are some tools, old-fashioned looking tools, and I'll tell you they're shoemaker's tools because Harry Peck was a famous shoemaker in the town in Lowestoft. And Harry Peck made and mended shoes beautifully, but he had one particular skill too. He would add a pattern on the sole of the shoe that was made with little tiny, tiny little silver pins. So he would tap the little pins into a pattern on the sole of the shoe. And that was Harry Peck's special skill. We're going to look in the next drawer. Let's open Nicholas Everett's drawer. Nicholas Everett, as you probably know, is the name of the man that the park is named after and the museum is in the park. In fact, the museum is in Nicholas Everett's house where he used to live. And inside the drawer, there's a book. It says, The British Secret Service During the Great War by Nicholas Everett. But it's not an ordinary book because if you have a look inside, there's a little matchbox buried secretly inside the book and that's because Nicholas Everett was a spy for the British Secret Service during the war and what he would do is dress up in disguise as a match seller so he had a tray with matches on he would pretend to be selling the matches but really what he was doing was watching the aircraft fly out of Germany and then he could secretly radio back to Britain and tell them what he'd seen. When he died, he gave his house to be the museum, which it is now, and you can go in and find out all about him. Let's look in the last drawer. The last drawer here says on it, Dr. Eastwood. There it is lined with gold because the story is so precious. And inside there's a bottle. It's a medicine bottle, a brown bottle you can see with a cork on the top. And on it, very strangely, it says, crushed mouse. Now, Dr. Eastwood was a real doctor in Lowestoft. He would never actually have given somebody crushed mouse. But he did have lots and lots of bottles and jars and boxes, all with medicines in and things that he could make medicines out of to give to people who were poorly. But this one says crushed mouse because one of the older people we spoke to on the Lowestoft Folk Project, she said when she was little, she remembered a girl at school who really believed that if you ate crushed mouse, it would stop you getting measles. And then somebody said, no, no, you had to wear an old dead mouse round your neck. And somebody else said, no, no, what you did was fry the mouse and eat the mouse, and that would stop you getting measles or it would cure measles. Now we know, don't we, that none of those things cures measles. But in the old days, that's what they used to think. So on the other side of the cabinet, there are three more drawers, all containing real gold with a story hidden inside that is a clue to something that's in the museum. The first one has got the name written on it here, Brian Clark. 
Let's have a look inside. So, inside this drawer, lined with gold, are three things. Uh, one of them looks like a little pot of makeup. Uh, one of them you can see is uh, a string of wooden sausages, not real sausages. And then there's a funny little metal thing, which I'll tell you about in a minute. And that's because Brian Clark was a famous puppet man. In fact, he still is. People think that in museums, everything has to be hundreds of years old. But Brian Clark is still alive and well and making puppets in Lowestoft. And he was famous for Punch and Judy puppets. He used to do the shows on the beach. You could go along and sit on the sand and watch him tell the story of Punch and Judy. And often in the story, there's a dog who runs away with a string of sausages. That's why we've got sausages in this drawer. And because it's a show and he did it every day on the beach, uh, there's a little pot of makeup. It's the sort of makeup that actors put on their cheeks. And then, what's the little metal thing? Well, the little metal thing is um, a thing to make a funny voice. Because if you've ever seen a Punch and Judy show, you'll know that Mr. Punch has a funny voice. He talks a bit like that. Um, but it's hard work to do that voice all the time. So the little metal thing goes in your mouth. Uh, you have to be careful not to swallow it. And it makes your voice sound like Mr. Punch's voice. So that's what Brian used to make his voice like Mr. Punch. Brian's puppets are famous all over the world. He still makes puppets, like puppets for puppet shows. He makes ventriloquists puppets as well. Um, and he, with his wife Dorothy, uh, make these lovely items carved out of wood or sometimes made out of paper mache. And a few years ago, the post office decided that they were going to make some stamps with puppets on. And of course, they photographed Brian's puppets so people could send cards and letters to all the different countries of the world that all had a picture of one of Brian's puppets. In the next drawer, let's have a look. It says, Mrs. W.R. Arthie's great-grandmother. So let's have a look inside and see what Mrs. Arthie's great-grandmother was famous for. Um, inside this drawer, there's some sewing thread and a thimble to put on your thumb so the needle doesn't stick in you. And there's the needle as well. But also lots of little fabric discs like this. You can see they're uh, made out of different colors of material and they're a big circle stitched round and it's gathered up so that it's puffy like this. And they were used for making quilts out of like a patchwork quilt, but you'd make lots of little circles like this and sew them all together and the air gets trapped inside and that's what keeps you warm, the air trapped inside the puff. Um, and they're called Suffolk Puffs, they're known as Suffolk Puffs. And in the museum is a beautiful, huge bed cover, all made out of little Suffolk Puffs like this stitched together, that is maybe 200 years old, made by Mrs. Arthie's great-grandmother. All over the world people do quilting, especially in America, and yet they still call them Suffolk Puffs. So there we are. You can go into the museum and see Mrs. Arthie's great-grandmother's Suffolk Puff quilt. We've got one more drawer to look in, and this one says on it, Bill and Margaret Bultitude. Let's have a look. Oh. There's a cup and saucer inside here. Just a fairly ordinary looking cup and saucer. It's got a picture of the lowest off town crest on it. It's called a souvenir piece. If you went to the seaside, you might go to Lowestoft for the day and you would buy uh, a tea cup and saucer maybe to take home to remember the trip or you could give it to grandma when you got home. There's nothing very precious about this one. But what it does tell us is that Mr. and Mrs. Bultitude have given some china, like this, cups and saucers, to the museum. But the ones that they have on display are very precious indeed. Not little souvenir cups, but Lowestoft porcelain, a very special kind of china that they make teacups and jugs and bowls and dishes and plates out of. 
and it's from about 300 years ago and uh, some of it is really, really precious. It's beautiful, very fine and almost see-through. If you hold it up to the light, you can sometimes see the light through. It's so delicate and sometimes painted with blue or pink patterns on it. And this is really treasure because if you were to try and buy a piece of lower stuffed porcelain, it would cost sometimes thousands of pounds. Recently, a jug was sold. It had a picture of men playing cricket on it and it sold for £84,000. So, real treasure in the museum. But this is just a little example of pottery that reminds us of that beautiful lower stuffed porcelain that is held in the museum. You can go and have a look at the treasure in the cabinet.